Good morning. Uh, you see us on a damp and drear February morning here in England. Um, I'm just going to take an opportunity to go over in detail the full modern fuel injection and distributorless ignition on my 142 uh, before, rather pleasingly, it goes back to correct historic guys for Amy um, to rally in the his HRCR historic series. Uh, yes, so this, hopefully within a couple of months, will be back on the HRCR historic road rally series, um, which will be nice to see it have a purpose again, because it really is a lovely car. Um, so let's go and try and make a note of everything that's usefully important in my engine bay and see how that goes. But first of all, let me introduce you to one of our new dogs. Deek! Meet Deke. He's 10 months old. He's a Brittany, or in old money, we used to call them Breton Spaniels. Um, he's a rescue dog from Spain. Um, and he's one of our two new gorgeous dogs, um, replacing since Jess died last year. Uh, it's one of the new Amazon Cars dogs. There is another one I'll introduce before the end of this video. There you go. This one's Deke. You going to say anything, Deke? Deke the noisy one. Yes, Deke the yap. No, he's not going to say anything. Sorry. I'm sure we'll hear him sometime during the video, though. Off you go. Okay. Let's start on the right and go left, I suppose. Okay, so starting on the right side of the engine. Here's our coil pack. So um, that's all, the spark is all dictated by the ECU um, and our ignition map there. Uh, this is probably superfluous. Uh, it's just an oil can tank, nothing to do with the fuel injection. That is the fuel pressure regulator, which you can see technically can uh, has a dump valve, uh, not, no it doesn't, technically has a valve that when you open up the throttle will raise the fuel pressure, i.e. dump some more fuel in. Um, but we haven't used that. Probably would have been quite a good thing actually because we certainly go a touch lean um, as you open the throttle. Um, but there's that. That is the supply fuel line. We still run on a mechanical linkage here. Um, we did try with a cable linkage, but it just couldn't take the heat coming from this manifolding here. Um, so it, this, this works much better. It's a really good solution. Okay, the radiator. Well, what you can't see is just mounted in front here is an electric fan. Once again, that fan is uh, operation is dictated by the mapping in the ECU. So that's, um, that will go, and we'll go back to a mechanical fan. Moving across here, so um, a set of 80 throttle bodies. Um, 80 are based up in Hethel, which uh, most of you will recognize that Hethel is, of course, the home of Graham Chapman's Lotus motor cars. Um, so that's the 80 throttle bodies. There's the four fuel injectors. So my mechanical linkage, um, there's the fuel injectors there in the back of the throttle bodies. And these are gorgeous throttle bodies. Although I have to say, I think in hindsight, I would probably go for a single pair of um, throttles rather than the quads. Um, that of course is the air temperature sender. Here is the water temperature sender in exactly the same place as the fuel injection car would have had it. Uh, the original fuel injection um, uh, 144Es or the P1800Es there. Uh, what else have we got then? Okay, so can you look down here, Emma? There. So there is the Bosch um, sensor and there's the trigger wheel. Uh, which tells the ECU exactly whereabouts uh, 
the crankshaft is at any moment. Okay, perhaps a better view now of the Bosch sensor and our trigger wheel here um, that I uh, spot welded onto an original, uh, onto the back of an original crankshaft pulley. Um, just stepping back a moment, just pop over here and that's the way I've actually plugged my um, distributor hole. Um, so I use the original distributor clamp so that the camshaft drive is located correctly and then I simply plugged it on top by welding um, a little disc of alloy on top of it. Okay, so um, yeah, we said about the throttle bodies, the injectors, um, and nice big air box. Um, we, we still massively favour air boxes over anything else. It makes a big difference on the intake temperatures. Um, so uh, yeah, that's why that's so big. Um, and in fact, tell you what, let's just go underneath and have a look. Uh, go and coming this side there's the four trumpets um, and what we discovered fairly early on was that with the best will in the world we kept on unwinding the trumpets um, hence my lovely safety lock wire um, to keep them in place uh, anything else to note well of course as usual, our Zerkatect ceramic coated exhaust manifold. Um, and the other thing is, of course, I've actually got a remotely mounted oil filter. So many years ago, we did actually run an oil cooler in the front here, but this engine just doesn't need it. Uh, you, can, you can keep it running at 7,000 RPM all day, um, and it really, the oil temperature hardly moves. Um, so the reason I've kept this remote one here now is simply for ease of changing it because with all this in the way above the filter location it's just a jolly sight easier to change it from up here than it is down there. Um, so I'm going to keep that uh, where it is. Now shall we go to the boot and have a look at the fuel system. Okay, so our standard 140 fuel tank um, in this guy's holds 75 litres, but in London to Cape Town guys, we actually bring it out here like that, such that it holds 100 litres. Um, it has two outlets uh, in carburetor guys. Um, that one's the main outlet and that's the reserve. Of course, in this guy's, that becomes the fuel delivery. Um, it is then pumped via the low pressure pump into the swirl pot here, out of the swirl pot into the Subaru, I think, fuel filter, out of the Subaru filter, into the high pressure fuel pump, and then out to the front of the car. And then the return line comes in here. So that's the return fuel line comes into there. So pretty much um, all of this is going to go and we're going to probably run, I'm thinking, a mechanical fuel pump on the engine um, plus on the reserve tank we'll run a low pressure pump as well. So that goes, that goes. I think we'll keep this natty little uh, Subaru filter, possibly rather an overkill, but um, they're nice filters. So that'll stay there, um, but otherwise it'll simplify a little bit in here. Right, now let's go to the last bit, which of course is looking at where the ECU is. Before I go there, there's a couple of things here. So there's the low pressure pump switch. Um, and so that's the low pressure fuel pump switch, which when you've got a full tank of fuel, probably we, I don't often use it. I generally let gravity do it. That is between the two to switch between road map and competition map. 
the main difference between those two is actually the red line. Um, I think the road map I tend to um, limit the revs to something like six and a half and on competition we're limited at seven and a half plus a few other little tweaks. And that is the lambda sensor, uh, switching the lambda sensor on and off. Um, and that's really, you only want that on in road guys when it can go into a feedback loop and set the um, fuel mixture up uh, as a closed loop feedback. But in competition, that's not used anyway, so we just switch it off. Okay, uh, that needs to be fixed since the new cage has gone in. Right, so let's just have a look here. This on top is the Lambda controller um, before it goes into the ECU. Underneath is Emerald's ECU here. Um, that's its programming port and that's its um, input outputs. The fuse box for all the fuel injection and this up here is um, the relays for various of the things like uh, injector power and, thing, and fuel pump power. Um, and that's it really. Um, so a lot of that is going to disappear now as we de-rig it, poor thing. Okay, well if there's anything else I find that's interesting whilst I de-rig this, I'll splice that into the video. Um, but really now it's time just to start taking things off and in fact the whole engine's coming out I shall be changing the camshaft uh, down to a 300 degree because uh, the 310 doesn't work with carburettors or SU carburettors it tends to be too pulsy on the um, vacuums and the SUs throw a load of fuel out of the reservoirs because of all these pulses going on at idle above idle it's fine so we'll be going down a spec on the camshaft. Um, I've got to do a bit of work on the flywheel uh, and that's it really. Um, then out this goes. Um, so yep, start de-rigging stuff, engine out. Um, and then I've just got to make sure the interior is eligible for historics. Let's get to work. I've just realized there's probably a value in me recording the de-rigging of this uh, because I've just spotted um, a couple of details that actually I need to remind myself of later. So on the fuel pressure regulator, a direct feed in to the rail via from the high pressure pump and then the return line is the regulated pressure. Um, so in fact, as this was installed earlier, it was this line here that's the return dumping down into here and this top one is actually the feed, was the feed in my installation. So that's the fuel pressure regulator route. Okay, just for my own future reference, the coil pack connector I've labelled A and has three wires, orange, brown and grey with red. The only other electrics on the left side of the engine is the crankshaft sensor and that is labelled, the wiring is labelled B and it's the shielded wire. Good, that should help when we put it all back together again.
Okay, that's a uninjected engine bay now. So all I've got to do is just plug up three holes where the uh, loom used to go through uh, and then put in the SUs. Um, so uh, yeah, slightly sad. So I've just got to go indoors now and remove all the ECU and the wiring indoors and then go into the boot and simplify that down to a single feed um, and delete the high pressure oil, uh, high pressure fuel pump. Now, as promised though, the other dog. Zips, come here, come on. Come and pose for the camera. Here's the camera, here's Zippy. You good boy, come on then. Ah. So this one is two years old. Zippy, camera, <laughs> and, and Deke. Um, and, uh, and Zippy's, yes, he's, he's a bit more of a throwback. He is also a Brittany, but he's actually got a tail, which Brittany's don't normally have a tail. Not their docked, they just don't have tails. Um, but he has, uh, and a bit more of a setter look to him. I don't think he's as pure a Brittany as, as Deacles is. There you go, you've now seen the two new dogs at Amazon Cars. There we go, off you go. So this is the entirety of the fuel injection system that we ran on our 142 for a short uh, number of miles. Uh, looks incredibly simple like this, you wonder why it takes so long and is therefore so expensive to um, install. Uh, the actual kit itself, okay the throttle bodies are quite pricey, the ECU is good value, um, and then that's the other capital item as well as the fuel pump. Uh, but by and large it, it's all pretty good value. The cost comes in creating the loom and installing it. So let's have a look at what we actually have here. So there's the brains of it. Um, we like Emerald, this is an Emerald ECU. Um, that's my communications cable to the laptop. Uh, of course it was an RS-232, it's now USB. Um, and there's all the input output to the engine. So there's that. The other bit of electronics is our much favoured wideband lambda sensor that we use on carburetor cars for setting up a car so accurately, as well as using it in a feedback mode with the ECU so it can actually try and aim for a um, an air fuel ratio uh, when you're cruising. That's that. That is the water temperature sender. Um, yeah, that's the water temperature sender, so it sits in the front of the cylinder head. That's the crank sensor, and there you see the trigger wheel with its missing tooth um, to tell the ECU exactly where it is. And that fits neatly onto the back of the crankshaft pulley, like so. So there you go, that's that and its sensor. Then we have the ignition. Uh, I can't remember what I've used here. It's a uh, Hugo unit. Um, I think it's uh, probably designed for a Ford um, coil pack. Um, because we've done away with the distributor, I took an old clamp and simply welded a plug to the end of it to seal off that and keep the oil pump drive shaft in place. Okay, and then the fuel side of things. So there is our high pressure fuel pump. A nice Subaru fuel filter, all fed from a swirl pot to make sure you never lose fuel. Out to the pressure regulator and then into the throttle bodies. So, a uh, set of four throttle bodies like so. 
trumpets, of course, to try and um, maximise your airflow, and a bit of ducting to pick up the cool air. That is the fuel injection system. Uh, very enjoyable. I uh, can't wait to find another car to put it in, but completely de-rigged from our 140 now. Thank you.